Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our next devotion on 1 Peter. When I started this series of devotions, I thought we might get through chapter 1. And here we are already at chapter 5, nearly at the end. But over the last few days, one of the great debates has been about leadership and the example set by leaders. Is it an example that we're willing to follow or do they say one thing and do another? And at the centre of this passage at the beginning of chapter 5 is the word example. And one of the ways in which that word could be translated is as a sampler. If you've ever been in one of these uh, stately homes, particularly of the Victorian period, you sometimes see these samplers. And children would be given uh, um, this piece of embroidery, perhaps with the letters of the alphabet. And the idea was that in order to learn how to sew or to embroider effectively, they would carefully follow the pattern that was set there before them, you know, stitching it in the same way. What example do we set in leading others? How will we exercise this important gift? Peter's already spoken about gifts earlier on in his letter, and now he develops this gift of leadership. But notice how he introduces himself, because that's very important. First of all, he introduces himself as a fellow elder. There's a humility there. He doesn't place himself over and above them, but alongside them as one who has been called as a leader in the church of God. And then he says he's a witness of Christ's suffering. And behind that little statement is his whole story of his own denial of Jesus and then his reinstatement as a leader in the church. And leaders are often the target, aren't they, for attack and suffering in the church. And then he says as a sharer of Christ's glory. As so often, Peter brings that future perspective. Again, we can relate that to Peter's own story when on the Mount of Transfiguration, he and James and John had had that glimpse of Jesus' glory in the vision that they shared. The picture of leadership which Peter gives is so appropriate. It's the picture of the shepherd. It's the picture of God himself. In the Old Testament, God is often described as a shepherd, most notably in the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. And then Jesus picks up that image in his own self-description as the good shepherd who lays down his life. For the sheep. And then, of course, memorably, when Peter is recommissioned by Jesus after his disgraceful failure, he's told to be the shepherd of God's flock, to look after the lambs. Because that picture of the shepherd reflects the heart of God himself. But then it's to be exercised in a spirit of servanthood. And again, this is the example of Jesus himself. And then Peter gives a little series of ways in which leadership is to be exercised. First of all, with willingness. It's not to be a drivenness about leadership. God gave his own son freely and willingly. And so leaders are to serve out of the willingness of their hearts. Eager to serve. Do you remember back in your school days that uh, pupil who would always sit in the front desk or whenever a question was asked, shoot up their hand, me sir, me sir, I want to answer. That's what the word eagerness really implies, that great desire to serve God, not to be greedy for gain then as now. The church could be exploited for financial reasons, but leaders are not to lead in that way. They're not lording it 
over the flock. Again, we think of the example of Jesus, who said the kings, the leaders of the Gentiles, lord it over their people. Probably thinking of Caesar Augustus, of Herod, of Pilate, of leaders like that. But then says Jesus, I am among you as one who serves. That's the example to be followed by leaders in the church. And finally, again, as so often, Peter gives us a future perspective because he talks about our eternal reward. In those days, if you competed in the Olympic or the Isthmian Games and you, you won your event, you would be given a crown of laurel leaves, which was a great honour, but of course it would fade away. Peter says we'll receive the crown of glory that's eternal. That will never fade because Jesus the King is coming back with his rewards for his good and faithful servants. To have a think today about the styles of leadership that you've seen, what works best and what about your own areas of responsibility and leadership? What example will you set? That's the great challenge for today.